We're connected to the ocean. It's in our hearts, part of our soul, and all around us. I think about it all the time. What an amazing convergence of special places, events, and feelings that define the sport of tarpon fishing. Every spring, thousands of fish arrive on ocean currents and show up in quiet basins at first light. The magic of tarpon is they appear in a window of time when conditions are perfect. And what's cool, they leave giant holes in the water. If you were given a blank canvas and asked to design the perfect game fish, you'd paint a picture of an immense, soulful creature whose demeanor is calm and at the same time explosive, who swims in crystal clear shallow water, eats tiny flies, and no performs way, acrobatic dude. feats with physical prowess. A match of instinct, power, and beauty. What you'd eventually see right. is the silver lining on the flats. The physical connection is surreal. There's a harmony of violence and struggle, which is less like a fight and more like a dance. Like any good dance, there's the satisfaction of looking at your partner, then letting them go. One of the most gratifying elements is getting to do this sport with some of your best friends. Guys that come from all over the world. Guys you've known for 10 years. Like-minded friends, family, brothers. Key West has always had a live and let live attitude. We're a diverse, tolerant community in the middle of the ocean. We've always had a fairly laid back attitude and unique identity. Somewhere along the line, we decided our value was in a quick buck. What we got were t-shirt shops and crude slogans. There are roughly 40 cruise ships in the Caribbean basin. Of all these ships, only Royal Caribbean has ones that are considered mega cruise ships. Of these mega cruise ships, only three are both too long and too deep to fit in the main ship channel leading into Key West. The Key West Chamber of Commerce is leading the charge to dredge a wider channel so that the Panamax-sized ship of over 1,200 feet can dock here. 
The estimated cost to taxpayers is $35 million. Key West has one of the best tarpon fisheries on the planet, and it's because of its unique geography, pristine waters, and abundance of life. The epicenter of this fishery is the deep water located here in Key West Harbor. In 2005, when the harbor was dredged and all the corals, sponges, sea fans were removed, we experienced a decline in the number of fish and the duration of their stay. The constant siltation of the harbor caused by cruise ships is now further compounded by the absence of the natural filtering mechanisms. We understand that the cruise ships play an important role in the Key West economy. But can't we recognize the value of what we have and strike a balance? The Key West economy isn't going to fall apart if we don't get mega cruise ships. A referendum is now going to the voters on whether or not to proceed with dredging. Uh, it's game on in here this morning. Even though the Florida Keys are not what they used to be after 50 years of change and impact, there's still the occasional day when a couple of guides all have the day off, the conditions are perfect, and epicness goes down. <laughs> that was your first cast ever in the Marquesas. Look at how beautiful he is, huh? Gorgeous. Not bad. There he is. Nice call, Jeff. That one made it easy for me, though, because he knew that he'd done something wrong right before he put his We are so fortunate to have the resource we have. Tarpon fishing is an amazing sport. As guides, we get a chance to do what we love every day. We are ambassadors to the flats. We understand the value is in the community. We get to share our passion with others, show them amazingly cool stuff, and laugh. In some strange way, tarpon are the lens for us to see through. There's a surreal experience in the electric neon colors, chains of fish, and flow of nature. Even if you don't fish, just respecting the wild phenomena of the tarpon migration in and of itself is a national treasure worthy of protection. What kind of legacy do we want to leave the next generation? We're at a crossroads. The backbone of the Florida Keys is the only tropical coral reef in the continental U.S. and it's the third largest barrier reef in the world. It supports an entire web of life. It's the reason our fishery is so good. We're working on projects like coral nurseries. What we've discovered is Coral has an amazing ability to grow much faster than we previously thought. There is a reason to be hopeful. We're finding ways to regenerate the reef. We have the technology to do this. That's what's worthwhile investment. We have to make a decision. What do we want to stake our future on? The amazing shallow water ecosystem, which is why folks come here? Or are we going to take a gamble on an industry 
that doesn't care what tracks they leave behind. Right here, I meditate upon my thoughts, but. 